A powerful X 1.1 class solar flare erupted from sunspot region AR4298 on December 8th, briefly disrupting high frequency radio communications across Australia and parts of Southeast Asia. The flare also produced a coronal mass ejection that appears not to be Earth directed, but it adds to an already active week on the Sun as Solar Cycle 25 continues to intensify. In this video, we will look at what happened, why it matters, and what scientists expect next. Let's get started. In the early hours of December 8th, the Sun released one of its stronger eruptions of recent weeks. At 12.01 a.m. Eastern Time, Sunspot Region, AR4298 produced an X 1.1 class flare, an event strong enough to immediately influence Earth's upper atmosphere on the sunlit side of the planet. Because X-class flares emit intense bursts of X-ray and extreme ultraviolet radiation, the effects are often felt within minutes. Shortwave radio operators across Australia and Southeast Asia experienced a sudden loss or degradation of high-frequency signals. These blackouts occur because the flare's radiation rapidly increases ionization in the lower ionosphere, causing radio waves to be absorbed instead of reflected. For aviation, maritime operations, and remote communications that depend on HF bands, even a short interruption is noticeable. The flare was accompanied by a coronal mass ejection, or CME, detected in satellite coronagraph images shortly after the eruption. Early trajectory assessments suggested the CME was not headed toward Earth. While this reduces the likelihood of geomagnetic impacts from this specific event, the flare did not occur in isolation. Several CMEs from earlier flares were already forecast to arrive between December 8th and 9th, prompting space weather agencies to maintain storm watches. What makes this flare notable is the broader environment in which it happened. A R4298 emerged as one of the more active regions on the solar disk, showing complex magnetic structures capable of producing strong eruptions. It is now rotating toward the sun's western limb, moving out of Earth's direct line of impact. Even as it exits view, monitoring continues since such regions can remain active on the far side of the sun. Taken together, the flare, its immediate atmospheric response, and the associated CME underline what scientists have been observing for months. Solar activity is increasing in both frequency and intensity as Solar Cycle 25 approaches its peak. To understand the significance of this flare, it helps to look more closely at how events of this scale arise. Sunspots like AR4298 form where magnetic fields emerge from beneath the sun's surface and become twisted or stretched. When magnetic tension builds beyond a critical point, reconnection occurs, an explosive reconfiguration of magnetic lines that releases vast amounts of energy. That release powers the flare. X-class flares represent the strongest category of solar flares, and even within that class, differences matter. An X 1.1 flare is not at the extreme end of the spectrum, but it still carries enough energy to disrupt communication systems modify ionospheric structure, and trigger radiation alerts for satellites. These effects come from the radiation itself, not the CME. Because radiation travels at the speed of light, it reaches Earth in about eight minutes, leaving no advance warning once a flare has begun. The mechanism behind the HF radio disruption is well understood. Under typical conditions, the ionosphere's higher layers, particularly the F layer, allow HF waves to reflect, enabling long-distance communication. But a strong flare shifts the balance by injecting additional X-ray and EUV energy into the denser D layer. That layer becomes so ionized that radio waves lose energy as they pass through it, making them unreliable or unusable. Scientifically, the flare contributes valuable data to our understanding of solar magnetic complexity. Flares like this help researchers refine models that link magnetic field patterns in sunspots to eruption probability, 
By studying how AR4298 produced this flare, scientists gain deeper insights into why certain regions become unstable or eruptive. The event also fits into the larger narrative of Solar Cycle 25. Each solar cycle includes a rise and fall in magnetic activity over approximately 11 years. During the rising phase and peak, the Sun produces more sunspots, flares, and CMEs. Cycle 25 has shown signs of surpassing some early projections, with several X-class flares occurring throughout the year. This upward trend shapes both scientific understanding and practical forecasting. CME behavior is another area of interest. Although the CME from this flare was not directed toward Earth, the relationship between flares and CMEs remains an active field of research. Some strong flares produce no CME at all, while moderate flares can launch massive ejecta. Understanding which magnetic configurations lead to linked flare CME events is essential for improving space weather prediction accuracy. In sum, the December 8th flare is scientifically valuable because it occurred within a magnetically complex region, it contributed to ongoing analysis of active solar conditions, and it provided another example of how radiation-driven disturbances can affect Earth almost instantly. While this particular CME will likely pass harmlessly into space, the flare and surrounding activity still have practical implications. HF radio is used by sectors that operate beyond the reach of modern communication networks. Maritime traffic on long ocean routes, long-haul aviation over remote areas, and certain emergency communication systems rely on HF bands precisely because they can travel long distances without satellites. Short interruptions may not be dangerous, but they highlight how sensitive these systems are to solar conditions. Beyond radio communication, sustained solar activity affects several layers of technological infrastructure. Increased radiation can impact satellites, causing temporary sensor interference or forcing operators to place craft into protective modes. When multiple flares or CMEs occur in a short period, the cumulative effects on the magnetosphere can increase atmospheric drag on low-orbit satellites, requiring periodic adjustments to maintain stable orbits. Geomagnetic storms, caused not by radiation, but by the arrival of CME plasma, remain a possibility due to other recent solar eruptions. Forecasting centers are watching for impacts from CMES released earlier in the week. These storms, if moderate or strong, could produce auroras at higher latitudes and occasionally at mid-latitudes under the right conditions. While auroras are visually striking, the geomagnetic disturbances behind them can also affect GPS signals, power grid stability, and long-range communication. For the scientific community, the next steps involve monitoring both the sun's surface and the solar wind. As AR4298 rotates out of view, attention shifts to other active regions moving into Earth-facing position. Solar active regions evolve from day to day, and a previously quiet area can rapidly develop into a flare-producing complex. The coming days and weeks may bring additional flares, as Cycle 25 remains in a heightened state. Not every flare will be significant, and not every CME will be Earth-directed, but the increased probability of impactful events requires ongoing monitoring. Agencies like NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center and the UK Met Office will continue issuing updates to operators who depend on accurate space weather information. Looking forward, the key theme is preparedness. Solar activity is a natural part of the sun's behavior, and Earth's technology must adapt to it. As flare and CME frequency increases, understanding their effects becomes essential for aviation safety, satellite operations, communication resilience, and even everyday navigation tools that rely on precision timing. X 1.1 flare shows how quickly the sun can influence Earth's communications and space environment. As solar cycle 25 intensifies, events like this will become more frequent. Staying informed is essential as we navigate a period of heightened solar activity.